In Windows PowerShell, most of the errors thrown by most commandlets are considered non-terminating. For example, uh, this function is designed to accept computer names from the pipeline. Here's an example of how to use it. It then connects to each computer name using the get wmyobject commandlet. It's entirely possible that one or more computers won't be online or I won't have the right permissions and so the command will fail. A non-terminating error means this command stops running but my entire function, my entire script, can continue to, to run. Well, exactly what happens when a non-terminating error is thrown is controlled by one of the built-in PowerShell variables. Let's see if we can find it here, called error action preference. So the default is continue, which is that behavior I just described. That command might stop running uh, since it failed against that particular computer, but the entire script can keep on going. Well, here's what you don't want to do. Uh, it's entirely possible that, well, and by the way, continue also causes it to display an error message. And, and what you don't want to do is suppress that error message by doing this. Error action preference equals silently continue. Now this is a completely valid thing to do technically. What that says is I'm changing for the duration of this script the value of error action preference. Instead of continue, which means keep going but display an error, I'm going to change it to silently continue, which is that setting you wish your kids had. Keep going and shut up about it. Don't display a message. The problem with this approach is that you've turned off error messages for the entire script not just for the one command where you anticipated an error. You will see a lot of folks write scripts this way, and it is a bad idea, so we'll delete it. If you anticipate an error with this command, then just anticipate it for that command. Set the error action, or EA, parameter to silently continue. Now you've suppressed any errors generated by this command, but any other errors that happen in your script will continue to, to display an error message. Since I'm not anticipating any other errors, I want to see those error messages because, well, they mean there's a problem, and seeing the error message will help me solve the problem. So you could also type the full parameter name, error action, but EA is pretty common because it's shorter. And this error action parameter is actually the key to PowerShell's entire ability to trap and handle those errors, as well as being able to suppress them.